morning. I'm Melissa Harris Perry. Connecticut lawmakers made a pivotal move this past week on the last day of the state's legislative session. On Wednesday, both the state House and Senate approved a bill preventing the release of crime scene photos and video evidence from the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting to the public. The law also put a one year moratorium on audio recordings, with the exception of 911 calls that describe the condition of any of the victims. Connecticut Governor Dan Malloy was quick to sign the bill into law only hours um, after the bill was passed. And the bill's passage was applauded by family members of the 20 children and six adults that were killed on the morning of December 14th, 2012. Several family members had demanded the law, even starting a change.org petition, which garnered more than 108,000 signatures. The families were clear about why they didn't want the pictures released. They said in writing, for the sake of the surviving children and families, it's important to keep this information private. Other gruesome scenes have been kept private, like the scene around Congresswoman Gifford's shooting, Vince Foster's suicide, and Dale Earnhardt's automobile accident. The crime has received such international attention, it should be afforded the same treatment. Those victims' families were sending the message that they didn't want the photos of their slain children used for the purpose of political gain. But, but there's a long history of the impact that photos have had on public policy. A key example has been when we've been, as a nation, at war. Some of the most indelible images come from the Vietnam War. Images like that of nine-year-old Kim Phuc, whose clothes and layers of skin were melted after a napalm attack. Or that of South Vietnamese General Win Nok Loan executing a Viet Cong officer by shooting him in the head. These helped to change the American public's opinion, to disdain our military's involvement in what was called America's most unpopular war. In 2009, when the Pentagon lifted the military's 18-year ban against photographing America's war dead, it showed the public the reality of military casualties from both the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Photographs depicting tragedy and horror can be powerful tools that can change public perception and culture. But showing those photos are not decisions that should be taken lightly. When President Obama initially chose in 2009 not to release the photos of prisoners tortured in Iraq and Afghanistan by U.S. military, like those images that we'd seen earlier from the Abu Ghraib prisoners forced to wear collars or hoods and masks, people were quick to jump to the conclusion that he was trying to hide something. But the president saw it this way. In fact, the most direct consequence of releasing them, I believe, would be to further inflame anti-American opinion and to put our troops in greater danger. So it, it's a tough choice. A, and when it comes to choosing to show the image, the slain child, I mean, it's a decision no parent should be faced with having to make. But it is a decision that Mamie Till Mobley did make in the case when her son, Emmett Till, was killed in 1955. Instead of having a reserved, low-key, private family funeral, Mamie decided to open the casket, to make the funeral a public experience, to show how killers, lynchers, J.W. Milam and Roy Bryant brutalized and tortured her 14-year-old son to death. Her decision to show the world the battered body and unrecognizable face of her son, Timot Emmett, served as a spark for the civil rights movement. Till's example might lead all of us to ask Newtown parents to release those pictures, be as brave as Mamie Till was. But sometimes gruesome photos can be used in deeply troubling political ways. As a reproductive rights advocate, I have sometimes helped women to walk the gauntlet past rabid anti-choice demonstrators. And not only do they shout, they hold up ghoulish, frightening images. The pictures are unrepresentative of the vast majority of ab abortions. And they are not, however, strictly speaking, inaccurate. I mean, certainly anti-choice advocates believe that their photographs of horror could and should immediately stop a practice that they define as evil and torturous. And I find the protest photos unduly upsetting for women already facing painful, difficult, and deeply personal decisions. So what should we as a public ask of the Newtown families? They want their children's short lives to belong to them, to be more than just a tool in the gun control debate. Who are we to tell them that they're wrong? 
at the table, Laura Wexler, a professor of American Studies at Yale University, who is also the director of the Photographic Memory Workshop. Billy Murray, one of the favorites here at Nerdland, and a former circuit court judge for the city of Baltimore, who works now as a criminal defense attorney. John Nichols, Washington correspondent for The Nation magazine, and author of the new book, Dollarocracy. And also, Michael Skolnick, another Nerdland favorite, who is editor-in-chief of GlobalGrind.com and political director to Russell Simmons. Thanks to all of you for being here. Professor Wexler, I want to start with you because your work is around the power of photographs and of images. And we in the Nerdland production staff have been seriously wrestling with this. Right. We've got two producers who were like, we got to see these photos. They could really change the whole Newtown conversation, the guns conversation. And, and, and on the one hand, I was like, yes, that's the Mamie Till Mobley. And on the other hand, ah, I understand not wanting to show the pictures yeah. of your slain kids. Yeah. Well, the two questions about a common interest in, in seeing them and an individual interest in privacy are already very complicated. But yeah. I think the question's made more complex by a kind of wish that the photographs themselves would serve as a magic bullet. Mm -hmm. If we could only see them, it would change the conversation yep. and perhaps be the finishing off of the stalling on gun control. And I know as a historian of photography that that actually is not so and it most likely won't happen. It's not true that a photograph by itself changes the politics. Mm -hmm. So we know this from many examples. You gave some, I would add in my own life, the My Lai massacre mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. girl being napalmed and Mamie Till's decision to show the open coffin of her son Emmett. But, you know, when Mamie Till showed that image, that image is, didn't travel around the world alone. There were a lot of people yeah. who were working on telling a particular story. Mm -hmm. What does that image actually mean? And that story had to be controlled. It's the story along with mm -hmm. the image. And just about coincident in time with that image were, was the fact that there were lynchings all over the country yep. and there were photographs made of them that were turned into postcards that were sent all over the country. Right. That didn't spread uh, civil rights and freedom. That spread terror and a sense of impunity. Right. So the images have yeah. to enter into a social movement that is precious. And it feels to me like part of what's happened in our in our guns conversation and 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 in, and in other aspects is that if the if the images just enter, they're just gruesome. Then they just become basically pornographic, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Rather than part of activating a movement. That's exactly right. And look, one thing to understand is this is a very different point in history mm -hmm. than the late 1950s, early 1960s. Yep. We don't have three TV networks that come on at, you know, 6.30 or 5.30, depending on where you live. Uh, we don't have a, a handful of daily newspapers that really are definitional. Yeah. The truth of the civil rights movement is that when we started showing pictures, not just of, you know, Emmett Till, but of Bull Connor mm -hmm. shooting with those fire hoses, that did have an impact. Mm -hmm. But that was in a very different time. Today we are siloed. Today we have so many ways that we get information. I can tell you that if those pictures were released, and I'm not, I'm not yeah. a fan of limiting yeah. release of photos, right. but I'll tell you that if those pictures were released, you would have some sectors of our political discourse condemning the use of the mm -hmm. pictures for political purposes. You would end up with a debate about the pictures rather than about the issue. You know, it's interesting, as, as much as I am obviously a part of point of view news, yeah. right, that, that is really, I'm not a reporter, I'm not a journalist, I don't make any claims to be what we're doing here is always meant to be analytic and to have a clear point of view, but your point is an important one because it, the lack of that, of the one person who, or one network that could sort of... Walter Cronkite. The Walter Cronkite yeah. who could put it out and then, and you wouldn't feel as though it was being used in that way. It, it, is it about the siloing of of, uh, of our informational sources, or wonder, Michael, if, if it's also that we, we've gotten to a point where the images of violence are ordinary for us, right? We see them in popular culture so regularly. Well, let me tell you what was an unordinary about what happened in Newtown. I was just, my grandfather lives in Newtown, and I just took mm. my three-month-old son to see my grandfather for the first time mm. just last week, and I stopped by Sandy Hook. It's tr you can't go to the school, but you can go to the street just to sort of have my son and pay our respects to the families. Um, There's a young boy, Noah Posner, who's the youngest to die in Newtown. Newtown. He was six years old, who was Jewish faith, and his mother, Veronique, um, wanted to give him a traditional Jewish uh, burial in his, in his, in his uh, 
coffin, and she went to put two stones, angel stones, in his hands. And she went to put one stone in his right hand, and she closed the hand. And she went to put the other stone in his left hand, and there was no hand there to put the stone in. So I think, you know, out of respect to these families, she made the governor of Connecticut, Governor Malloy, look at her son before she closed that casket. So she was courageous. Mm -hmm. She did do the Mamie Till she moment did. with the governor. Yep. However, I think that for Americans, we have to see these images. This is not about politics. This is about lifting the consciousness of our nation. Mm -hmm. We have to know, yes, these were angels that went to heaven, mm -hmm. but this was a brutal, brutal attack on children whose hands were blown off, whose mm -hmm. faces were blown off, mm -hmm. whose torsos were blown off. This is not just about glamorizing yeah. or sensationalizing what happened in Newtown. This was horror. And, and, of course, the reason that that kind of horror could happen to those bodies is because of the technology that was used to kill them. Sure. That's right. right. In, in, the, in the case of Emmett Till, it is, um, I don't know any other word, it is the evil of the lynchers who, who go so far as to do that to a teenage boy. In this case, it is certainly the evil of the shooter, but it is also the fact that he is working with a weapon mm -hmm. that, that, can, can, do, that can, can, do can do this kind of damage. Uh, before I answer, my mother's mad at you for calling me Murray. <laughs> now, now Sorry. here's the deal. We can't Sorry. predict how impactful these photographs will be in a political or non-political consequence. But legislation prohibiting them seeks to do just that. It says, in all cases, mm -hmm. except the very exceptional ones, which God knows who will determine, mm -hmm. you can't release these photographs. That's why it's wrong. Yeah. The photographs are going to have to run their course, and we're going to have to see contextually how they play. All of us have had photographs impact us so dramatically that they've almost changed our politics, and in some mm -hmm. cases, mm -hmm. have changed our politics. And photographs are a break on the evil of government. They're a break on the evil of individuals. Mm. And we can't give them up because a few people are justifiably upset mm -hmm. in their personal lives about them. This is a much larger issue. Yeah, yeah. Judge Murphy, which I'm going to get that right now. Um, well, we're going to come right back on I the... I wasn't mad. Yeah, a bunch of, bunch of bomb, man. We're going we're to come right back and talk more about this issue of photographs and the, and the power they have and our, our right to know as we come back.